Hello once again witchy people welcome back to my Covenstead and another little peek into my Sabbat spice rack. Now I'm getting close to Imolk and some people do actually still celebrate Candlemas I know. Uh, so 1st to the 2nd of February. Uh, anyway the there, there are two sort of like herbs that I really associate for myself with the milk. And today I'm going to be talking about iris. Now iris is hugely wide, widespread. It's found all across the world. Now in ancient Greek mythology, iris was the uh, personification and the goddess of the rainbow. And she was a messenger for both Zeus and Hera. Now, um, Iris, <coughs> the goddess, <laughs> created the Ark of the Rainbow to use as a bridge to travel between heaven and earth. Um, and specifically purple irises were planted on the graves of usually women. Uh, to encourage Iris, the goddess, to come down and lead the souls of these women, you know, uh, safely into the next world. So it's sort of like to summon, you, you planted the Iris to summon the goddess. And <clears throat> yeah, she, she would give safe passage and guide the souls of these, these, these poor passed on women to wherever they needed to be next. So th there is some train of thought that says that the iris flower was named after Iris, the Greek goddess uh, of the rainbow, because the plant comes in every colour of the rainbow. In fact, there are over 200 varieties of iris um, and, and therefore they can be any colour of the rainbow at all, which is where their name comes from, apparently. So... We know how widespread it was and how much it was used throughout history because even the ancient Egyptians had images of um, Iris, the plant, <laughs> uh, in royal palaces. It's been found in royal palaces. Uh, by medieval times, it was certainly being used as a symbol for French royalty. And um, it it's kind of became synonymous with France and royalty in general, um, not just French royalty, but it, it sort of became a royal emblem um, as, as the fleur de lis. And it's become, I think it's, it's a national flower or a representative of New, New Orleans. And I can't remember where else, there's somewhere else. But it's, like I said, it's, um, it's kind of become synonymous with royalty in general. So it was once used, the flowers especially were used to make dye, um, beautiful, rich purple dye, and still is. In fact, there are plenty of people, me included, that still try to use uh, iris flowers as a dye. Um, um, it was mainly the, the root was used for um, perfumes. Um, the ancient Egyptians even had recipes using certain types of root i'll go into that further in a minute <clears throat> um, and it also had um medicinal value uh, value but nowadays it's more a symbol of oh crikey there is many different meanings of the iris flower and symbols that it can mean as there are varieties um so oh gosh it can mean faith hope love compassion passion, respect, loyalty, protection, courage, royalty of course, uh, freedom, like I said, because each colour, each hue and each shade of flower, even where it grows, where it comes from and who even picks it can denote a different meaning for this flower. So I also use oris root powder. Now oris root is just the root of the iris. Oris is another word for iris. Uh, so basically the iris roots, try saying iris this many times, the iris plant root dried and ground into a powder 
it's best that you don't do this yourself. You can ruin all sorts trying to grind uh, oris root, iris root. Uh, it's best to buy it. Um, unless you have the patience to dry it for many, many months. Um, so the root used is usually from the bearded variety because it has a sweeter smell. Um, bearded variety is often slightly sweeter smelling. So magically, oris root is once again used for many, many things. I think in hoodoo it's mainly used for love drawing. Um, but I use it mainly for protection. It's very good for protection and divination. It can be used for not only drawing love, but for keeping love and keeping love faithful. Um, but the best, if you're going to use it um, before divination or hedge riding, anything like that, um, sprinkle some in, in your bath and have a bath with it. It's, it's brilliant for protection that way. So funny enough, in ancient Greece, the root was mainly used in making perfume and it was usually um, uh, a variety called the Pelida variety. I think it was originally from Croatia, um, sort of like the German sort of like regions, that sort of region. And it was introduced into Italy, I think, probably during the medieval sort of era. But like I said, it was mainly used for um, perfume. Nowadays, um, it's used as, um, it can be used to flavour a lot of things, especially sweets and toothpaste. It has a slight violet sort of taste and scent. Um, and it's also used as a fixative in perfumes, yes, in the perfumery trade, but quite often in potpourri. So like I said, with a taste similar to violets, it is used as a flavouring for sweets, not just sweets as, as the English say sweets, but candies in general and sweet things. So medicinally, it was once used for a lot of bronchial problems, coughs, colds, um, as a blood purifier. It was good for the liver. However, and this has to be noted, it is a diuretic, so it makes you lose water. It is cathartic, so it will make you poop. <laughs> it's, a, it's like a laxative. And it's also a, a, an emetic, so it will make you sick. Um, so with all these things in mind, I, I tend not to ingest it. I don't ingest a lot of herbs unless there's something that I grow in the garden that I know sort of culinary, for culinary purposes rather than medicinal purposes. If you do insist on ingesting oris root in any way, I would suggest you get it from a reputable supplier who obviously has um, cultivated and prepared the herb in such a way that it's not going to cause you too many problems. Uh, but like I said, bear, bear all that in mind. So, Imolk and, you know, its associations there. A lot of people obviously then associate uh, Iris with Brigid, Brigid and similar ones, uh, similar gods and goddesses. For me, much as I do love Brigid and everything that she stands for, I am definitely one for Hearn, Hearn the Hunter. And I think... It's not necessarily because of what the flower or the root or the plant itself symbolises or can mean. It's when it grows, where it grows. So it's very much a, a almost a wild plant. I mean, it, it, although it is cultivated and used in a lot of you know gardens these days, it was once very much a wild plant, and I see it as such. I, I let it grow wild mainly in my pond. It grows really well in my pond. It's a variety that I found a neighbour had plucked it from her garden and, and threw it away. And I found it and planted it when I was a child in my garden. And I still have cuttings of that plant now, fifth, nearly 50 years on, sort of 45 or so years on. This plant or parts of this plant are still growing in my garden. And, you know, I, I love that 
history of it. It's a very long lived plant. It's a very hardy plant. Um, and like I said, I grow mine in water and many people associate iris obviously with different colours can mean different things and where it's grown and who picks it, like I said, can symbolise so many different things. For me, it's definitely, because it's associated with love so much, a lot of people do associate it with Venus. Um, it's also associated with water because it grows well on the margins of water. So I also find it very good liminal plant, um, for, if we're talking magically. So, like I said, hedge riding, going between the worlds and through doorways. It's a very liminal thing because it grows on the margins. It, it can grow in dry soil. It can grow in wet soil. It grows on the edges of riverbanks, on the edges of water sources. So, like I said, brilliant. For, if you're working sort of like in liminal spa uh, spaces and that's sort of like magically enhanced, sort of magically... Mm, my words are going again but yeah magically liminal spaces and like going into other worlds that sort of thing then oris and iris are fantastic um obviously as well working with the dead the color purple is is quite important to a lot of people and purple iris especially uh which mine is but that i grow in the garden also known as blue iris um is is wonderful for that as well so there you go on my Sabbath spice rack for Imol Imolk. Um, it's definitely, like I said, I associate it with Heron simply because it's that time of year. Heron is sort of like February, March is it, getting stronger for me. It is is more of a presence. And it's that, that sort of time of year. And because I associate that time of year with, with Hearn, the hunter, I also associate that with any magics I do at this time of year and any sabbats and esbats at this time of year and so Imolk is in with that but like I said Venus, Brigid but because of the variety of colours and where it can be grown it can be associated with almost anything um, so there you go a wonderful 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 plant found worldwide and uh, yes a little look into my sabbat spice rack for Imolk Thank you for watching Witchy People. I'll be back very soon. Bye for now.